Paul Robinson. I live here in Albuquerque, and glad to see all of you here uh, on such a lovely day. Uh, and I've, uh, I'm a research director at a uh, nonprofit scientific and research organization called Southwest Research and Information Center. And I uh, have an email, and we have a website, and hopefully spelled both of those accurately. And uh, I've been working uh, as a, a contractor to uh, the coalitions that Janet was talking about uh, to address uh, some of the contaminants that have occurred at Kirtland Air Force Base and Sandia National Labs here in Albuquerque, and was asked to present at this particular conference so that you would learn more about some of the contamination issues that are affecting the community here where you're visiting. Uh, and uh, New Mexico is a uh, special place, land of enchantment, we like to call it. And it is a place where uh, nuclear weapons is a growth industry. It's uh, the core of our economy. San Diego National Labs uh, uh, is the less famous of our two national labs, though it employs about twice as many people as the more famous one up uh, in Rio uh, Arriba. And uh, so Indian National Labs is a national laboratory within an Air Force base. Kirtland Air Force Base has a federal tenant called Sandia National Labs. And there are five military bases uh, here in uh, New Mexico. And so uh, federal lands, uh, federal land managers, uh, uh, federal uh, uh, tribal responsibilities, uh, the federal government is the largest employer, and the largest of the federal government employers is the Department of Defense, followed by the Department of Energy. So, uh, and of course, uh, these are uh, elite organizations. So, when they form an organization, they call it a center of excellence. <laughs> so, we're talking about some of the excellence that has occurred. Uh, this is the east west runway of the airport. Right across here, uh, if you land in east-west, the mountains go north-south, and there was a uh, Kirtland base had a bulk fuel terminal that leaked for 30 years, starting in 1959. The uh, Sandia National Labs Tech Area One, the first tech area, they named them in consecutive orders, uh, a big used septic tanks uh, for uh, 40 years and cleaned their sinks and lab. Uh, activities uh, into septic tanks, and the uh, septic tanks uh, leak into the ground. Uh, tech Area 5 is where the two reactors on Sandia National Labs are, and the mixed waste landfill is a landfill that had taken waste from uh, these various facilities, uh, 59 through uh, 89. So let's see, this is the... <coughs> Move it forward, move it forward. Uh, the bottom it? one goes forward. Okay, thank you. Excellent. It's kind of counterintuitive, like, you know, the centers of excellence. So, <laughs> so here's the east-west runway. Provided by our friends uh, Google, uh, we're very fortunate to get current Google Maps of these sites. Lots of places you can't get current Google Maps. You've got to know how to find the satellite imagery. So uh, this uh, is the runway. This is the extent of the... Uh, Kirtland based plume, and this is roughly the uh, size of the Tierras Arroyo. This is the Tierras Arroyo that comes through this area and then empties into this part of the Rio Grande Valley called the South Valley, the Mixed Waste Landfill, Tech Area 5. Uh, I like looking at these kind of photos, and uh, it's fun to see this stuff which fly in and out. Uh, so this is a uh, view of the Albuquerque area showing where these sites are with the Rio Grande going north and south that shows the decline in groundwater level since 1960 with the darker color being more than 120 feet and the uh, <coughs> 0 to 20 along the river being 0 to 20. So as uh, the city has relied, uh, uh, relied exclusively on groundwater for drinking and industrial supplies up until it uh, was able to begin to utilize some of the Navajo water that <coughs> Senator Clinton Anderson poached 
so effectively uh, back in the 60s. Uh, not only is the San Juan Chama project not complete, the Navajo water projects that uh, uh, that water was taken from are not complete, but that's can't divert. So uh, that's uh, depth. Uh, so the tech area, the, uh, briefly reviewing some of these sites, we have trichloroethylene, a cleaning solvent, and nitrate. Trichloroethylene, excuse me. And uh, these are where these two reactors are. And hopefully this material will be up on uh, Beyond Pesticides website for you. 50 to 70 million gallons of wastewater uh, in the 60s through 90s. And uh, uh, other waste from other units here. So 70 million gallons or so leaked under this area. The Albuquerque Valley is uh, like a sandbox. Uh, really good sand. If you played in a sandbox when you were young, this is really good sand we have here, and it's very porous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, these things uh, move down through the sand to the groundwater, and the depth to groundwater uh, is about 450 feet. It's about the level of the river, and as you come east or west, the water level stays the same, but the slope rises, the mesa rises. Uh, and so the uh, depth of water at the uh, Tech Area 5, the reactor site, 450 feet. So there's groundwater contaminants, so they've had to move 450 feet. And the, they didn't move by skipping the dry zone, the Vado zone, the unsaturated zone. So there's a column of contaminants that connect to the groundwater. And uh, the uh, Tierra Sawayo this is the one that's uh, had uh, billions of gallons that were from an old acid uh, waste line. That's always an evocative name for something going to a septic tank, wouldn't you say? Yeah. 1948 to 74, excuse me. Uh, and uh, uh, no estimated volume of release from some of these. So it's just no estimate of the volume at all. Uh, billions, hundreds of millions. Uh, and uh, so these sites, uh, this is about a, uh, here's a mile. Yeah. So this is about a mile here. And uh, uh, this is a cross section across the valley from the river east towards the mountains, mm -hmm. showing this water table at about the same level. And along the mountain front, it starts to break up. There's a lot of faulting. And this is where the Tierra Arroyo groundwater is. So, so, so it's a, a complex plume, shall we say. So this is the uh, size of that plume. This is uh, 3,600 feet, about a kilometer. So it's a couple of kilometers wide, a couple of kilometers uh, long, uh, reaches down 450 feet. Good size, as my mother-in-law would say. <laughs> Absolutely no coverage of these things in, uh, here in the land of nuclear weapons. You, you don't get investigative journalism out of the uh, journal. Uh, and so there's a little a tongue, a uh, shallower area that's been contaminated, and then a mixing zone and a deeper area of contamination. And so uh, these are... Uh, um, uh, sites for which the state has issued notices of disapproval over several years, which means try again. No one uh, fails the year, no one's going to take over these labs, so it's, it's uh, performance is not... It's right. a social <coughs> So the mixed waste landfill, this again was a 30-year operation, uh, operated after the initiation of the Resource Conservation Recovery Act, so it should be regulated as an active unit, but uh, they are an interim unit. The state has caved into their legal theory. Uh, there's soil contamination from the PCE at least 50 feet below the surface, and the groundwater wells are so poorly constructed as to not identify groundwater contamination. They were built, the water table dropped, they're sampling a dry zone. Oops. <laughs> uh, about a million and a half to fix them. <clears throat> uh, and this is the mixed, uh, the aerial view of the mixed waste landfill in 1987. This is excellence in waste management. Oh, <laughs> Unlined. 
classified and unclassified areas. So, uh, just again, moving very uh, quickly, uh, one of the key issues with the mixed waste landfill is to try and get them to eventually uh, move the waste into a prepared site rather than just cap it. Yeah. So there's supposed to be a reevaluation every five years of the feasibility of excavation. That decision was made in 2007. This year is 2013. Have five years passed or not? Yes. Not for the environment department. How did they figure? They're uh, taking the actual construction of the cover rather than the date of the decision to buy four years. So this is the uh, plume from the Kirtland Air Force Base bulk fuel spill. The uh, Exxon Valdez is in the 8 million gallon range. So this is, uh, there's a guy from the state uh, quoted as saying 24 million gallons. You know how much credibility people offer the state here, so it's probably accurate within 50%. Yeah. Still good size. Yeah. So ethylene dibromide is the carcinogen Janet was mentioning, benzene, toluene, naphthalene, diesel, gas, jet fuel, uh, various generations of jet fuel. So just, uh, uh, you know, some people call things uh, witches' brews. You know, this is unfair to the witches. <laughs> they would not do that. Uh, and so this is about a, a mile right here. So we have these different layers of contaminants that reach about a mile and a half. Here's the drinking well. So there's a plume there. Uh, and they're trying, they're pulled out about 4,000 gallons worth of vapor. So 4,000 out of 24 million? Plenty of work there. <laughs> so these are views of the plume at a shallow, medium, and deep level. This is, so this is 450 feet, the groundwater. Mm -hmm. This is another 100 feet down. And this is another 100 feet down. The wells have these 600 foot long screens, which are excellent for mixing contaminants if you happen to have them. Uh, and there's been a problem in other Superfund sites uh, and I've got to uh, stop. Uh, oh, just I can't, I can't, let me borrow one of Janet's min minutes. <laughs> so uh, this uh, sandbox we're in is not homogeneous. It's not the same as you go down. There are areas of higher and lower uh, flow capacity, higher and lower permeability. So when the contaminants leak, they don't just go straight down. They go down to a, a lens that's lower permeability that flows along the top and then goes down. So it's like a pachinko game yeah. for contaminants. Uh, and so that, uh, th and this is all above the water table. So trying to clean this stuff out. And the water table's dropped 150 feet. Uh, so this is a cross section across that plume, zero to 450 feet. Uh, and this is uh, 50 foot down and 450 feet. It's worse at the bottom because these plumes are so old. They've done all. They've done lots of moving. It's not like uh, they were just just happened or just discovered. Uh, this is the letter from the Water Protection Advisory Board that is the first time a s elected body in Bernalillo County asked Sandia to do something. Usually, it's just you've got so many jobs. Can you have more? Can we make more weapons, please? Here they're asking for funding for environmental. So this is a very important uh, uh, result of the work Janet was describing. And this is a, a presentation to the uh, New Mexico Water and Natural Resources Legislative Committee, trying to get the legislature to be uh, encouraging better cleanup. Uh, and these are the summary of concerns as the city wrote them down. Uh, so they were able to adopt our concerns as theirs, which is a measure of success in yes, social, yeah. social action efforts, as you know. So thank you very much. Thank you.